Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Teams and Small Groups. This is Lecture B, Managing Teams. The objectives for this lecture, Managing Teams, are to identify characteristics of successful team members, analyze team conflict and performance, define what is meant by virtual teams, and Describe the guidelines for building and leading successful teams. Although healthcare organizations are becoming increasingly dependent on teams to deliver services, solve problems, innovate, and coordinate organizational activities, most healthcare professionals are not trained, socialized, or experienced at being a team player. Thus, even though healthcare has become a team sport, Many healthcare professionals do not know it yet. One of the valuable traits associated with being an effective employee in healthcare settings is being a team player. What does being a good team player mean in the healthcare setting? Brownstein has listed a number of characteristics of effective team players, and you can see some of them in this list. These are traits you can seek in others when selecting team members or should consider when developing your own or others' competencies as a team player. Trust and commitment will develop within a team to the extent members of the team demonstrate these traits over time. Number one on this list is reliability. In HIT, Convincing users that you will be there for them when things get tricky is invaluable in gaining trust. An example is reliably returning pages from a clinical area going live with a new system and making sure that your constituents' needs are met. You want them to know that you are in their corner. Good communication is essential. Does the member communicate frequently and appropriately with other team members? Are tasks, deadlines, and work processes clearly communicated to others? Active listening is a key part of communication. Does the team member really listen for understanding? Does he or she empathize with the communicator? HIT is a very complex field with clinical, technical, administrative, and process expertise distributed among many people. It will be critical that you are able to listen effectively to those team members, otherwise known as resources, to best move projects or initiatives forward. Active participation means that the team member makes an effort to not only be present at meetings, but to be engaged and participative in the team's work. Are questions asked? Does he or she contribute to the dialogue that helps move the team forward? Or does the member rarely show up at team meetings, and when they do show up, rarely contribute to the discussion? Being cooperative and accommodating leads to a positive work environment and team climate that allows for frank discussion and alternative points of view. Such a climate allows for the establishment of trust among team members. Clinical and technical staff have many demands placed on them by their organizations. Teams will need some degree of flexibility to address logistics as well as changing situations. For instance, changes in procedure reimbursement can alter budgets for system acquisition. And finally, team players who are helpful and respectful can do much to create a positive team climate. Being helpful and respectful can further the quality of communication and trust among team members and can serve to improve the quality of work outputs, decision-making, and team processes. Although society and organizations often see team-based solutions as a preferred way to improve work processes, decision-making, innovativeness, and work outcomes, the educational systems and workplaces embedded within the culture of our society tend to promote and reward independence, reliance on oneself, and individual achievement, as opposed to being a good team player. As the quote on the slide indicates, teamwork goes against the grain of our humanity and, for now anyway, few people independently choose to be a team player. 
Because teamwork is not a deeply ingrained value, conflicts within the team can arise. When people come to the healthcare workplace, they may not be adequately prepared or motivated to function as team players. As such, team performance can suffer. One frequent difficulty observed within team settings is the phenomenon of free riding or social loafing. Individuals working within a team setting may find it easier to shirk their responsibilities and allow others to pick up their slack, which can lead to poor team functioning and performance. Groupthink is a phenomenon that occurs when a team shuts down conflicting ideas or alternative points of view. In other words, the team begins to think alike and discounts perspectives that are at odds with that thinking. Groupthink, because of its restrictive outlook, can cause teams to perform poorly, as it does not allow the team to adequately consider all assumptions, choices, and solutions. A powerful remedy for groupthink is to have an individual within the team serve as what is known technically as a deviant or devil's advocate who is willing to challenge the status quo. Virtual teams that are not restricted by distance or place have become very popular recently. Virtual teams are facilitated by web-based and groupware technologies that overcome the physical distance between team members. Virtual teams can save time and money by not requiring team members to have to travel, sometimes great distances, to meet in person with their team. Virtual teams, in many cases, outperform co-located face-to-face teams. The use of groupware technology appears to overcome the kinds of process losses and biases often seen in face-to-face -face settings and allows these virtual teams to generate more ideas. This most likely occurs because the focus of the virtual team is less on the person generating ideas and more on the content of those ideas. In healthcare IT, the number of specialists working on projects often makes it impossible for face-to-face -face meetings. So, going virtual is simply a matter of survival for the project. When building a team, team leaders need to be cognizant of approaches that are likely to result in high performance. According to Katzenbach and Smith, these approaches include establishing urgency, demanding performance standards, and direction are important to let team members know that the work of the team is critical and valuable. They also need to know the standards or expectations for the team. The more critical and meaningful the justification for the team's work, the more likely the team will be to meet its performance potential. Select members for skill and skill potential, not personality. The skills, knowledge, and abilities needed among members to achieve team goals are normally determined after the team has been formed. It is generally wiser to select team members based on current skills or their ability to learn new ones before the team is formed. In terms of first meetings and actions, it is important to note that initial impressions are always important. When teams come together for their first meeting, members are acutely aware of the actions of their leader and other influential team members. They are paying attention to signals from these authority figures that shed light on concerns and assumptions the member brings to the team. As Katzenbach and Smith say, if a team leader leaves the team kickoff to take a phone call 10 minutes after the session has begun and he never returns, people get the message that the work of the team is neither critical nor valuable. Set clear rules of behavior. These are rules of conduct that help teams achieve their ultimate purpose and goals. Important initial team rules relate to attendance, participation and contribution, phone call, email, text message interruptions, confidentiality, constructive conflict, and results orientation. Set and seize upon a few immediate performance-oriented goals. 
Establishing a few challenging performance-oriented goals early in the life of the team allows it to celebrate a success and to become a real team, allowing it to become more performance-focused in its approach and likely to meet its goals. Challenge the group regularly with fresh facts and information. New data and information allows the team to deepen its knowledge of the performance challenges it faces, thus improving its work processes, clarifying its goals, and influencing team purpose. Spend lots of time together. Teams that spend time together in both formal as well as casual settings develop stronger interpersonal bonds among team members. Such bonds allow for better understanding of team members' personalities, backgrounds, intentions, experiences, and skill sets, which can lead to a team climate of trust, respect, and performance. Many times, team leaders and members seek to reduce this time together. However, effective teams need to give themselves the time necessary to learn to be a team, which is a basic attribute of team building. Finally, exploit the power of positive feedback recognition, and reward. Positive feedback and recognition are powerful tools for influencing the actions and behaviors necessary to team performance. This concludes teams and small groups. In summary, in this unit we explored the role of teams in developing quality healthcare services. We define the words team and group, and we identified the stages of team development. We also identified the characteristics of successful teams and team members. We followed that up with an analysis of team conflict and how it affects performance. We briefly discussed what a virtual team might mean. And finally, we ended this presentation with a look at various guidelines for building and leading successful teams.